record. I don't know if you usually hit record on cloud or if you do it locally, but... Uh, it doesn't matter. Okay. If um, you do it locally, you have to upload the video. Right, which is, okay, I was just planning to do that anyway. Okay, well, in that case, this meeting is being recorded. <coughs> um, we have a handful of us, but we're still missing a number of the team leads. I will be filling in for Dan Sosa today and reporting his bit. Hi, Anton. Or I should say, hi, Antons. Um, and <laughs> Extremely high concentration of Antons. I say if we did, it would, it would be funny if we did like a, an infographic of name frequency because for a while I, I was the only Shannon I knew about and then there started to be more of us and it's like I know my name used to be more popular than this so. Okay, let's see, we've got Daniel and Christine. Does anyone know if Maya is planning to come? Nope, okay. We can tag them. <coughs> see, I can see if she's online. I don't know if we... Ah, she's not in my DMs anymore. Okay. Well, people are connecting some housekeeping items. Yeah. Uh, so tomorrow um, we will have our first experiments of slightly changing the format. So task VT, so Dan Sosa will present what, what his team is doing, kind of more spotlight on specific team. Uh, and the goal of this new format is partially to kind of showcase more like to give more opportunity for teams to showcase whatever they're doing internally, because right now it's like no way to figure out what, for example, task VT is doing, unless you go into Slack channel, you participate in their daily calls, etc. But you know, that kind of creates this silo of action, but you know, you don't see how you can contribute if you are outside of task VT team. So tomorrow we'll see how that format goes. Um, like I hope that it will work nicely because I'm really interested to see what people are doing like on the ground, especially like in, in teams and projects that you know then that are not like exposed easily exposed to to outsiders of their teams. So any suggestion for that type of format are welcome because we're just experimenting. Uh, so if somebody wants to see specific things, for example, from teams that they're not part of, that would be great to kind of maybe compile a list of, you know, what people are looking for. Okay, wait, could, could you describe it in a little more detail, how, how this is different from what you're already doing? That's a good point. It's not that different from what we're already doing, right? It just now we specifically each day try to focus on specific team. So for example, like tomorrow, Dan will kind of focus, okay, here is task VT, here are what we do, here's our like huge pipeline we're building. And if you want to have interesting to join us, 
we still need people in this area, this area, and so on. So kind of exactly the same as before. It just, since we start getting more and more teams, it's hard to package all of that in 30 minutes. That's why every day will be slightly more spotlight for each team and so on. So that's kind of a suggestion right now. We'll see how it goes. So not much is changing. We're just kind of amplifying the good bits of previous format and kind of uh, lowering the priority of something that is like, you know, I mean, blockers will be still there. If people need some help, etc. announcement, you know, we, we're still accommodating for that. It just, you know. Yeah, I think the, the daily call is, is really just a glimpse into what is happening, very high level. And, you know, there, there are a couple of <coughs> quick things like the podcast update, you know, things that uh, different people are working on the, you know, edges of our swarm that is not really like the, the main teams that daily call would be instrumental to help kind of uh, visualize for other people. Like, for example, we have Evgeny here on, on the call. Uh, do we still? Did he jump off? Oh, I think he did jump off. But like integrating people that are working on the edges of this whole uh, infrastructure is probably a good way to, to repurpose the daily call. Right. Hey, what's up, Maya? <laughs> I'm happy to see you. How are you? I'm good. Thanks, God. <laughs> yeah, it's it's interesting, but we'll we'll see. I'm taking it easy for today. I I'm joining this daily call. I have no clue what's happening, so maybe like um, you know, we we still need the quick update for for everyone that that was missing for for a couple of days and things like that. So I think the team leaders section is is good um, to to stay. Um, Shannon, do you have the, the agenda for this call? Uh, so the agenda is pretty, it's pretty mild. I mean, we just had basically just whatever our opening topics are, and then we'll jump right into the team <laughs> lead updates and have Q&A at the end. Um, so since it's already 10.10, we should probably get going. Was there anyone who wanted to do a spotlight at the beginning of this meeting? I have something from Daniel Lindenberger, uh, if not. Um, no? Okay. Um, well, I guess one thing I could actually bring up aside from um, just uh, what Daniel uh, sent me earlier was uh, we have still tried to continue planning this webinar. Uh, I don't think that we're crucially far along, but for instance, uh, it, I'm trying to follow up with a new guy. I think that we've been working with, um, I'm going to butcher his name, uh, I think, but his name is Ser Sergey, I think. And uh, he has, I guess, some background in pharmacy. And uh, I had kind of the idea that maybe it would be good to try to reach out to uh, pharmacy companies. If we could get people in their R&D departments to come to the webinar, I think that could be a really great way to contact people who've got incentive to uh, develop therapeutics and vaccines. And uh, we are still looking for a way to filter through our paper authors. And I guess one, one idea that was posed was we should uh, find authors from the more cited papers, maybe also the more recent papers. And this could be a good way to get an audience. So we've got different people working on these tasks. Um, and I guess yesterday, Daniel had a, an interesting call with somebody um, from disaster management. Uh, from the U.S. Health and Human Services Department, and uh, they had a they had a call that's posted on the YouTube page uh, called the Converger's Call. He's got 18 years of experience uh, at the CDC and has been with HHS for a while. So they basically they had a good call talking about how uh, our work might coincide with uh, supply chain work. It looks like, and uh, the you know advise various decision making bodies about how to handle uh, shortages and things like that. And uh, if you're interested, please do check out the video. And then uh, that's all I had to say myself. So I think probably it would be a good time to jump into the team updates. Um, Maya, would you like to go first? Uh, yep. Uh, we uh, work on, um, we started to, to work in three main dire directions. One is we understand how important pipeline is and properly uploading uh, code into GitHub and uh, work efficiently collaboratively on the pieces of the code that we have. That's one direction. Another direction, 
we are still figuring out uh, dictionaries and uh, relations between uh, the specific uh, terms and we still try to understand <clears throat> which approach is more solid uh, so uh, we do have some code that we need some optimization in uh, we are looking uh, forward to explore that and the uh, third direction uh, is uh, github code and uh, Sorry, um, I'm just <laughs> kind of here, tired. Uh, uh, and, um, um, wow, one second. Brain dead, really. Okay, I think most of us, uh, at least a little bit, are. Yeah. Um, no, it's because I was working, like, from the very early morning. Um, and ah, actually very, one of the very crucial points with us is still coordinating uh, with uh, search and giant team. And I, I'm looking really forward uh, to a call with Imran today to make sure we do a uh, relevant job and we do not overlap too much. And the third direction for us is to analyze our successful and not successful extractions. So there are a lot of discussions around that too, because should it be similarity? Should it be understanding of data structure? What should be the approach? Uh, how should we start? Um, this time it's kind of, uh, uh, it's a huge volume uh, of things that has to be uh, processed till the submission. But even though we have time, I kind of start to, start to get this uh, sense of urgency uh to process we don't have any blockers so far but kind of i would love to have a bit more integration uh with other teams kind of maybe to be a little better directed so and how um, can we be i'm yeah. i'm wondering um i see so a anton and manuel do you think that it is a good time to invite maya to join our call at some point with software infrastructure and practice I, 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 I'm not sure if she's already on the channel that we are in vertical infrastructure, but for sure she can join wherever she feels. Right. I don't think that she is. That's why I'm bringing it up. I know that we're kind of early phase and we've had just some yeah. beginning discussions, but I'm wondering if based on what Maya was just saying, if you think it's a good time to loop her in. Uh, sure. Like, uh, we could definitely do it. Again, we're just very really early on right now with TaskGeo, TaskVT. Uh, but you know, being part of conversation is okay. Yeah, of course. I mean, I, I, I was thinking that she was already part of the channel, but if not, of course, uh, she should be able to join uh, wherever she, she Well, we is. had only one first, like, really early on call, right? We're in the incubation stage of those efforts. So, yeah, let's patch my in. Um, if Christine, like, test put only somebody from test ties. Yeah. Wants to like yeah. join, so we slowly. I mean, not slowly, but surely, we're moving forward to integrating all of the code infrastructure. Mm -hmm. So, if you have any delegate who kind of takes that role, yeah. in our way, we will add them to that conversation. We only had like one call so far. Which is that sounds good. Yeah, we would definitely want to kind of, you know, keep track of like everything. Mm -hmm. What's going on? Yeah, so yes. it's usual like when the need comes, we, we immediately act on it. Before it, we just, you know, try new things, etc. So, may, I think may, I please, may I please confirm that I'm getting the things uh, correctly? Uh, there is uh, some uh, already some cooperation, like some planning on more structured cooperation between groups that is just starting, right? Yes. Yes, so it's on the level of code infrastructure cloud infrastructure, you know, how we integrate into data sources, etc. Actually, right now, there are a couple of, like, at this point, there are separate efforts. One of them to deal with Dataverse. So, datasets.coronavide.org, we have an instance of Dataverse. It's uh, Yes, I have two, an access. Right? So, this is, like, uh, one piece of it. Then another piece of it, this is what Manuel and uh, Dan is part of. It's more of a, like, GitHub code base. And now we're working the path, how we merge those two things together so that after that we could roll out to, to you know, to the rest of Makes the org. Makes sense. 
but Thank if you, so you like anybody anybody who wants to kind of be part of that conversation you know you, you, you feel free to join we're again we're still in the incubation phase that's why it's kind of hidden from the rest of the org but you know we're a transparent organization otherwise so feel free to reach me uh, at anton on slack and then i'll just put you in excellent Okay, um, if that's all, Maya, uh, maybe we should move on to Ty's. Oh, hi. So, yeah, uh, we had a pretty good discussion yesterday, uh, basically on what uh, our end product should look like. So, uh, like, and that would kind of depends on what end user we have in mind. So, right now, we kind of, you know, have two sort of imaginary use cases one is with the epidemiologist and the other one is more policy focused and um, the you know the information that they need would be pretty different like um, for the policy makers they might need more even more distilled uh, information rather than uh, just a bunch of articles uh, but we also want to make sure that uh, we are not kind of we, we are providing we are being providing as much information as possible and we are not kind of trying to or intentionally mislead the direction of policy making for example so it's like uh yeah so i think for now uh we we think we, sh we can best use our resource in uh on you know establishing the uh, data extraction pipeline, basically. We want to identify articles and want to extract information from the articles. And it's pretty aligned with um, the AI power literature review effort that uh, Kego is pushing. Um, but later on, we might, you know, then think about how we can best communicate the information to different end users, but we think that might be more of a organization-wide effort rather than from a team. Um, yeah, so that's uh, our short-term goal would be focus would be focused on the data extraction pipeline. Um, and we, uh, while approaches, we took the uh, data table, the standard data tables that are published by Kego, and we are starting to sort them and try to kind of categorize them into uh, different categories. For example, there, these are numeric numeric variables, and a lot of them are time periods, and some of them are, uh, you know, proportions. And based on these, we want to uh, recruit uh, subtask teams uh, to work on these. So yeah, this is where we are at the moment. Very cool. That sounds really interesting. I'm looking forward to seeing more about that. Thank you. Um, okay, and uh, let's see. Uh, uh, Task Geo, do we have anybody from Task Geo here who can report? Yeah, I'm here. Uh, so we have been keeping uh, with the discussion of uh, what we want exactly to deliver on the second round of submission. Uh, we have also keep on finishing the things that we left hanging. Uh, to, to make the sprint for the first submission. And, basically, and also, uh, we started working on the uploading to the Dataverse that should be completed uh, either today afternoon in the Spanish time tomorrow morning. That means before 12, 18 hours. And well, that's more, more or less everything. One thing that uh, maybe came to mind, uh, to my mind that I wanted to discuss, but I don't know if this is the moment, is that uh, as we have the team data sets and also most of the part of the geolocation of papers on, of NLP is working, let's say, without the without within uh, the task geo team that maybe we could split uh, this task force because uh, it could make sense to just uh, join all the data gathering uh, people to data sets and all the people who are doing LP uh, to join Brandon. Uh, but I'm not sure if this makes sense to you. Hmm. Okay. Anybody have any thoughts on that? I, I don't personally, but. Okay. Um, okay, looks like that's a to be continued discussion. Um, okay. Uh, <laughs> unless Archer, do you have any thoughts on that? I would be interested to know. 
Not a surprise, <laughs> no. <laughs> put you on the spot or anything on your first day back. <laughs> yeah, I have no idea what's going on, to be honest. So I'm just listening in. I, well, I, I did hear the call uh, with AI too. I watched it and I have a, a, an I, ideas how we should be aligning with, with that direction and what we should be doing. But other than that, I'm clueless. Okay, well, uh, Manuel, part of why I don't have an opinion is like I could use a little more context. Could you explain in more detail? I mean, uh, on TaskGeo, we are not related to one uh, Kaggle task. Uh, so we have been like an original team for other teams. And our main objectives have been two. Uh, one of them is uh, gathering data sets uh, regarding demographics and geographical information. So this is in the scope of the data sets uh, team. And also, uh, we, ha we have been uh, doing the geolocation of papers, which is an NLP task, which will be related to brand team. Basically, the NLP people on my team uh, are more close to Brandon and their people when they work than to us. So maybe it, it could make sense to simply say, okay, Tazio has no uh, task for it. So we just uh, split and move the people between the, the two task forces that exist that, are, that makes more sense to be there. I actually have an idea. So to me, it sounds like we, we actually are missing the, the variations of task geo. And what I mean by that is task geo is serving a very specific type of data, the geospatial data. But there are other kinds of data that exist in the, in the papers. We just, we were aware of the geo one as being the most obvious one. So I actually think that there should be much more of these task geo teams and their purpose is to amplify other people, but through this kind of building foundation of, <coughs> of geospatial data. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, no, but I mean, now that you say like, if you word it uh, like this, it makes sense because for example, you can say that the, the, the geodimensional, uh, is a, the, the geospatial is a new dimension on the data and we can find other, other, other ones and make uh, parallel teams, let's say to task geo that have one part of NLP, one part of data, of data gathering. But as I was uh, wondering around about what to do with the team, uh, how to <coughs> manage, there were things that I was seeing on other, uh, on other, on other tasks, and I was thinking, well, uh, maybe we are duplicating a for efforts with other task forces. So maybe it's because we are in the middle of of one of of, of these task uh, of these task <coughs> of these teams, and we should be split and could make sense. If you say about adding more, then well, it makes sense to have teams that are in the middle. It's just to be the to be the exception one. So I didn't feel it like yeah. And again, point. like we. I actually talked with Anton about this. It feels like we are operating in fractals and as fractals keep growing, like they start to unbundle and like split into the new fractals. So essentially, like if you guys want to split into new smaller fractals, you just need to make sure there's enough momentum and the momentum is quantified by the presence of like a, a leader of that team, a fractal to actually make sure that it, you know the momentum keeps growing so i would okay, just because um, vt's yeah, kind of having a similar <laughs> sort of thing because i li listened into vt's call last night and um vt is kind of they're looking at their they've got big quite a broad set of tasks they're looking at to take on like lots of subtasks to their whole big picture but they're they're kind of distinguishing like people who are going to lead the small squads to deal with these small things and right now it sounds like v it sounds like geo has got Two, two small squads within this geo team, and you think that them two squads should be just be dealing with independent things because they're working on different problems. One being LMP, NL, NLP, and one being data gathering and managing and, and pipelining it into the whole, the whole system. Yeah, but uh, there is also maybe one different, I don't know exactly what's the situation in team BT, is that there are already two teams that, that do the things that we do. Somehow, yeah, yeah, and and there is also that uh, all the VT, yeah, exactly. We we are not saying to split to become two more new teams. Merge. We are we are we are asking merge. maybe to be merged if it makes sense. I mean, if it oh, makes somebody sense, somebody is growing his fractal. 
So you, wait, I mean, so you're saying instead of come. spinning off your NLP and data set people from GEO into the data set and NLP teams that currently exist, you want to contract everything and be one GEO team, including NLP and data sets? No, I mean, right now we are one team, but I, I feel like we have two different tasks that are covered also with two different teams. So maybe it could, ma it could make sense to split the task GEO and be merged to each of these teams. What uh, Tyler explained, I think that, that is like splitting the VT team between different tasks, but are all orbiting around the VT task. Right. So they, yeah, they will be creating new, like, new sub teams f around the same. But what I'm saying is, to split and, and, and say, you're it, actually to give you that I'm high pro level. I'm, I'm, just one thing is, I'm not saying we have to do that. I was just proposing it because maybe it makes sense. I was starting way, to your, your microphone is too close. <laughs> <laughs> um, if, if the only thing I could really give to this is <coughs> if there's a chunk of your team are already working closely with Brandon and NLP people, and there's a chunk of your team working with whoever's dealing with data sets stuff right now, um, other than the fact that you're kind of supervising it, what is um, what would be the difference if you decided to officially merge the two halves into the into the squads as they are? What, would you continue? Would you take one side or the other, or would you still sort of guide and support? Because we don't have any hard and fast rules. If you feel yeah, like it makes sense to you, it makes no difference to me <coughs> where you where you are, what label you're under. As long as I know what you're doing and how to send people to you when you need it, that's literally most people's problem. Labeling I mean, is a kind of a secondary to problem. Yeah, of course. I mean, I, I was just. Uh opening the discussion because uh, it, it makes sense uh, to this and I, I will continue of course uh, working uh, probably on the data set uh, data sets team because uh -huh. I haven't do yeah. I haven't done anything related to the NLP task uh, yet this is so. very interesting discussion by the way because that's essentially yeah, because... for us to figure out how to like create structure while avoiding the labeling and creating or, those dynamic or, dic structures. or dictating because yeah. no one really can dictate on anyone. Yeah. It, how you how you want uh, for me? If if I if I had a, a an overriding say for me, it makes very little difference how you decide to label yourselves. As long as you get into things that need to get done, get done. I don't really mind. I don't really mind at all. You could all be one big task for me. It makes no difference. It, the only reason tasks are useful to, right now is because they have differentiated goals and you don't have a differentiated goal so it, yeah it make, in, in my that measure it don't make any sense for you to be your own thing i noticed that as soon as i sat down and actually defined what each group was doing i was like you're kind of a bit of everyone because you're kind of helping here and, and, you're, and you're adding like a geospatial element to two teams and you're kind of doing statistical management stuff for another team's work and i'm like i don't know what you're doing but from the outside, it looks like you're doing a bit of everyone's work. So yeah, I never, I never understood it, but it worked. So I didn't tell it to stop. <laughs> yeah, no. But I mean, after Arthur proposed to to have more teams like us that are related to one dimension of of let's say information, like we are doing with geospatial, maybe it makes sense to, for us to exist. It was just that I was having the doubt uh, where I was planning what do we want to do, and I was saying that. I was seeing that some of the things uh, were in collision with what in data sets they will be doing or what in search engine they will be doing. So it was like... Uh, it's really about the, like what makes you the common thing versus what separates you. Because in reality, like the first level of abstraction is the geospatial aspect of the data, right? But the one on top of it is the fact that it's actually about data and creating that data infrastructure. So you guys are working yeah. on, on the same thing, it's just... I mean, if you look at the org chart, the way I defined you as a, se as a separate chart that pulls in geo-specific data and plugs it into the data pipeline, but sometimes that data goes in not into the main... From my understanding, it didn't all go into the main pipeline. Some of that went in as, a, a, as an extra piece of information, an extra dimension to other people's work, because it didn't go through the main data pipeline sometimes because you processed it in-house. But if you want to process it as part of data and just have geo as part of data, it makes perfect sense to me as well. It's not confusing. It makes perfect sense. Okay. Okay. Um, uh, actually, do do? so one, one quick question, though. You said you guys do now have a, t a Kaggle task, right, that you're going to focus on? 
on the first version, I think, of the data set, when Arthur created the, the Slack at first, uh, one month ago, we did have one task. But later, they uh, changed them, and we get merged between ta uh, the task for risk and the task for ties. OK, so, and so that's, the, that's the current state of, in terms of Kaggle, that's the current state of things? Exactly. Gotcha. So we don't okay. have a, so you've been yeah. subsumed basically. Okay, well, yeah, yeah it's yeah, exactly. um, it makes sense. So I, I, I yeah, I, and I was all I was going to say too for my side is just that if you um if you essentially uh, divert into the data sets in NLP, then you are sort of your charter then is to kind of serve everybody. It sounds like you were already doing that, but then it would be official that you are because data sets and, and NLP affect pretty much everybody's tasks. Um, so it sounds like, yeah, it makes a lot of sense. I mean, we can further discuss this. I was just bringing the data uh, to the table. I mean, if you, if you want to spin down channels, as a, we, we do this, we do this, we expand and then we cut things back and we, and it, it, if it concentrates the work into a place where you're all discussing the same thing or you're discussing the same thing in two places and not everyone's in the same channel, it, it dilutes the knowledge and we'd rather have it in one space being useful and effective than some of the conversation happens in geo and some of the conversation happens in data sets and some of it happens in ties and, and if it's a bit everywhere it's harder to track that information if it's in one place everyone understands it better and if right. some of because like the geo teams like trello board is full of all sorts of stuff and it's been managed really well but if some of that could be disseminated into other groups and the data data settings themselves, it's only going to concentrate the work to where it's needed. Because it sounds like you're already, like you said, you're duplicating, you're worried about duplicating work, you're worried about um, making two versions of a similar solution. I mean, we're not, we're, we're obviously pro-experimentation, but experimentation can also be wasteful if it's, you're basically producing the same thing. It's, it's a, neither one of them is right or wrong, but I can definitely understand the logic of what you're getting at. Right, and, so, and I'm, I'm getting the impression from some of the talks, at least on VT, which I'd like to present on next if we're, you know, if we have a good uh, rounded out discussion here, um, that uh, there is a little bit more emphasis on efficiency in the second round anticipated. It's a little bit more product directed, maybe not completely, because it's I, you can't get all your research done in one wave, but what, the first wave was highly experimental for obvious reasons, right? Um, so I think w once we have some learnings, it, it's more conducive to, to streamlining things in the way you're suggesting, um, which is why we have software infrastructure team meeting now as well, at least in beginning phase. So, um, well, since, since we are running a little over time, uh, I would like to move on now to uh, presenting for Dan, who's not with, it, uh, with our meeting today. But uh, Daniel Lindenberger sent me his uh, update. So he says uh, that uh, he's got team leaders matched to project based on project ideas and proposals. I have to guess this is from that form he sent out asking for responses on uh, what Yeah, that's what I watched, I watched through last night. Yeah, they were talking through that. Great. Okay, that's, that's great. I'm a bit behind on that. Um, and uh, Patch is working, Patch and Dan are working on um, a system schematic for how the different could put, okay. <laughs> Yes, it's they crazy. are. It um, looks amazing. For those of you who haven't seen it, this is uh, my printed version of Dan Sosa's uh, BT schematic. Um, no, I won't show insane, you the digital copy beautiful. because I won't. Uh, I want you to still be, uh, you know, co yeah, cognitive yeah. after this. But uh, yeah, it's the, beautiful um, that I had to print it. <laughs> yeah, but there, there is basically in the process of the, the, the Dan and um, Patch are basically building um, a lucid chart version of it today. That's the morning's task, at least they were doing. I'm looking forward to seeing it because it's just mental and beautiful all at the same time. <laughs> yeah, it, it's, I love it. Um, but I'm, I'm very pictorial when it comes to like software architecture. So I mean, I, I appreciate there being something. So I'm, I'm actually, I'm so excited about this. Um, uh, and uh, okay, so they're still waiting for more input from uh, subject matter experts. Uh, they're gonna talk to a couple today. Uh, over the next few days, working uh, with Patch to break down projects and create Trello cards so uh, they can grow project teams and get started over the weekend, beginning of the week. Um, blockers are just that uh, BT team would love to have more subject matter experts to consult with. It, that's, the, that's the fucking, that's everyone's problem all the time right now. And I'm trying, all right, I'm hunting, but I don't really know how to bring them on board. And, and it's still like... It, we're in the process. We're trying to pull pull people in. We're working That's on right. it. That's um, right. And I actually um, am hoping that um, some progress is being made on contacting subject matter experts for the webinar. Tyler, I can't remember how much of that was your action required. Um, my action was to talk to Sergei uh, Miroshnichenko, forgive my pronunciation, 
Um, and I haven't managed to get in touch with him yet. So that was trying to go the pharmacy side. Um, do you remember who on comm is supposed to take over the paper side? Is that Marco or you? Oh. Um, that much goes into my head. I don't know. I okay, can't. I'll I'll recheck probably, our minutes. Yeah, um, yeah probably, I need to I need to start making more notes for myself. I'm just I normally rely on my brain to carry stuff, but I'm putting that much into it right now that stuff's getting pushed right back out the other side. <laughs> it's been a problem for me as well. I, I say I literally have my nice analog notebook here now. Um, so um, well, thank you everyone. I see some people are dropping off, and we're um, we're a little over time. If there are any questions, I can hang out. If Archer can hang out, I you know we can still do a Q and A. I don't think okay. so. I think everyone here has been here for a while. So, um, all right. Well, thank you, everybody. I'll be posting this later. All right. Thanks, guys. Thank, thank you. Thanks. Bye. bye.